muscles are deceit deceitful. <laughs> Jesus. 
And he's probably the most authentic teacher on why not to get tattoos that I know. And he helped me preach this the last time I preached it. So, I, I'm, I love people. I'm not here to condemn people. I'm here to teach people. I'm here to teach what the authority of the Word of God tells us about our bodies. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Did you know your body? If you're a true believer, once you've been born again and filled with the Spirit and the entire sanctification, your body's not your own. It's His temple. Amen. And it changes things completely. Because my body is not mine. I am the caretaker of this body in which He dwells. Glory to God. Now, if truth and advertising laws actually govern tattoos, here's what the ink would actually say. This came from Reader's Digest last summer and he gave me a good chuckle. Still in my rebellious rite of passage phase. I anticipate always feeling as whimsical as I was when I chose this. I've seen some of those. Thinking ahead deficient. I've seen some of those too. Personal names on my body are not necessarily indicative of my relationship with that person when you read this. <laughs> Ooh, oops. <laughs> I, so I regretted this one almost immediately. <laughs> on that personal names, I know one guy who has a tattoo of his ex fiance right there. And he didn't marry her. And for his next couple of girlfriends, he dated the name. <laughs> Bad story. I, that. I have a weird take on the, on the world and things. And I get funny pictures and funny ideas in my head sometimes. And it just, you all tore me up tonight. <laughs> It may be wrong to assume that I actually know what this symbol represents. <laughs> Have you seen that one a few times? Actively taking a role in reducing the number of potential places that might employ me. <laughs> oh, yeah. yep. Seen some of those. So what does the Bible teach us about tattooing? That's a great question, isn't it? Have you ever heard anybody ask that question? Have you? Well, typically what we do when they ask that question, we go to this passage. Leviticus 19.28 Do not cut your bodies for the dead. Do not mark your skin with tattoos. I am the Lord. Now, if I had the time, I would develop cutting and tattooing, but I don't have the time. Cutting is a huge issue in the 25 and under population in North America. Some 25% or more of young people are engaging in cutting their skin to try to release pain in their lives. And that's an old practice. It goes all the way back to Bible times because that's precisely what the priests of Baal did when they worshipped Baal. They slashed themselves. They cut themselves. And ancient people believed the practice of slashing their skin like the dad, gathering demoniac did in the tombs. When he cut himself on the, on the stones, he was trying to let demons out. Ancient peoples believe that the piercing and slashing of the skin allowed demons entrance and exit through the body. And some people still believe that even yet today. And the practice of the, of the Canaanites all around the Hebrews in biblical times was to do this precise thing. They'd get cutting and tattooing for the dead. Have you ever known somebody get tattooing for the dead? I have. I've known people who because of a loved one's death they get a tattoo of that loved one's name or a symbol representing that loved one on their body. That's pagan. That is not a Christian practice. And it's an ancient pagan practice that goes back thousands of years. Do not mark your skin with tattoos. I am the Lord. Now, when people look at that passage, they say, Dr. John, that's Leviticus. That's the law. That's the Old Testament. That's the Pentateuch. We're no longer bound to the Old Testament law. Give us some New Testament teaching on this. Okay, so what I'd like to ask you to journey with me tonight is if that's the case, then the rest of Scripture will bear out and reinforce the law. And if the Old and New Testament together, the law, the prophets, and the New Testament, if they bear this truth out, then it's something we're accountable to in our lives today yet. Right? It's not just part of the ceremonial law. So let's see if the Scripture bears it out.